So what is going on everyone, my name is Little Mary Man, and today I'm very very excited to bring you this video. I've been planning it up and I've been drafting it up the past week and a half and I've basically just trying to piece together everything to do with Nero Blackstone's life story and in this I'm going to cover sort of his childhood, his life pre-Shadows of Evil and his life sort of in Shadows of Evil and a few of the things that he references within the map with true quotes and stuff and how he references sort of other maps and of course the future of Call of Duty Black Ops Street Zombies. Definitely, if it sounds like something that you would enjoy, hit that subscribe button and of course comment below what character you want me to cover next. But without further ado, let's get straight into the character of Nero Blackstone. So the inspiration behind the character of Nero Blackstone would actually be Harry Blackstone, a 20th century magician and illusionist from Chicago, Illinois in America, obviously. And ignoring the sort of second name basis relation for a second, we'll just take a look at Harry Blackstone's posters and like from these you can really see like how connected these actually are to Nero's posters and how similar they are as well. Now going back to the second name basis, whether or not Treyarch sort of manipulated sort of our real world story with the zombie story and connected these two in a father, son or sort of like nephew, uncle way. And that was really up to them. You can take from it what you will, but there's nothing really referencing the name of Nero's father. I've gone through pretty much everything, but there's nothing that he references sort of a father on a first name basis or even an uncle on a basis of that. He does reference his parents, which we'll come into in just a second, but he doesn't really reference the name Harry or anything like that. So that is completely up to you to decide, but there's no physical evidence behind that as well. So yeah. So moving on, Nero's voice actor, of course, Jeff Goldblum, is probably best known for his performances in Jurassic Park and Independence Day, but he definitely voiced the character of Nero really, really well in this map. So rolling on into Nero's childhood, we know that he was born into a wealthy family and it seems that he didn't really get the attention that he needed when he was a child because he spends his whole life striving to get some sort of recognition, some sort of fame on a certain level and that's what he spends his whole life trying to do. He is not happy when it's sort of he's in bad light, he always wants to be in good light, in good fame and he always wants people to sort of love him and admire him and sort of adore him. And that's what he spends his whole life doing, so we can sort of pin back that back to his childhood and say, well, did his parents actually give him the attention that he needed? And he also references getting bullied as a child and how, like, maybe even that his parents didn't really care about that either and he had to put up with that on his own rather than getting the support from his parents going through that time as well. Which is actually pretty funny because then when he goes on to talk about his wife, he says that she complained a lot. She was really, really lazy and she said that he didn't give her enough attention even though he claimed that he gave her more than enough attention and how she spent money. Oh, so, so much money. That's exactly what he says. And then from a radio that we pick up in Nero's lair, Nero's lawyer actually sort of calls him and he's like, well, like you took out a loan of a certain amount of money and Nero's wondering how and it's because his wife actually forged his signature, took out a huge loan all when N Nero was actually in a coma and like he's like well it, this actually couldn't be possible because the date signed is the exact date you were in a coma so like we we have the bitch like like we're gonna sort this out together but then Nero takes actions into his own hands which leads us right on into the intro cutscene where he's on the phone to the bank where the loan was actually taken out and proceeds to kill his wife so let's take a look So it's pretty clear why Nero actually killed his wife. She was continuing to spend money and sort of she even went behind his back and took out a loan that he had no clue about. And whether she did it again, it's like we don't actually know, but of course she did spend a lot of money and it was either leave her alive and she continues to spend money and nag him or just kill her off and sort of get a bit of money off the life insurance policy. And sort of he took the killing her and getting money back 
and sort of that led him into sort of letting the Shadow Man in. And of course, before this, Nero was actually practicing dark magic. Remember, his career and his sort of life was absolutely going down the drain. He was losing a lot of money, sort of losing a lot of equipment because he had to sell it to actually sort of keep his life on track. So then that way his like career is then suffering because he doesn't have as much equipment to do actual tricks with. And then his career went down the drain. So he started practicing a bit of dark magic and trying to sort of like because dark magic is freer and it costs less and you don't need too much equipment so he tried to include that into his tricks but it didn't work it only let the shadow man in sort of again and then sort of through this like true sort of uh, like access and dark magic then the shadow man was then able to access Nero's dreams and in these dreams shad like the shadow man sort of showed him everything and showed him like like as if he was reading a book in his dream and this book actually got transported into Nero's lair and from what the shadow man actually previewed to Nero this was all zombies all margwas everything we see in the realm of shadows of evil this was all seen by Nero before anybody else he's seen it in his dreams like as if he was predicting the future and this sort of scared him and sort of he panicked and he like he doesn't want anything to do with these dreams he tried to get rid of them and of course the book being in his sort of in his lair and obviously continuously being there and he having to look at it then Nero got even scared like scared even more and then eventually he did read it he didn't want to but he continued to read it because remember the shadow man kept at him and at him in his dreams and he wanted to try figure it out and get rid of it so he read it and in this of course in this book we like the the story of like Black Ops 3 Zombies is in this like the future of Black Ops 3 Zombies is in this book and the past of Z the Zombies is in this book like the story of Origins the Battle of the Great War the map of Origins and the giant and Doris and everything is already foretold in this book and Nero had access to all this information and it made him really really fear the future. So we're gonna have a listen to sort of a lot of what our characters say about this book and what Nero says about this book and I already made a video on this, so uh, if you didn't see that, definitely check it out. But here is sort of a quick summary of everything they say about this book. This is a room of secrets. Do you know what I speak of? So, you're talking about some book, like it might explain all of this? Uh, yes, Detective. I've, I've read many books, but uh, forgive me if I don't remember the precise details of one specific book. Uh, what, what book? Uh... This was the one book that I was afraid to read. The one book that gave me nightmares. Even now, uh, oh, I just can't. I just can't. So this is where it's all written down. How these guys fought those guys for their guy's shit. Yeah, I get it. If this book says what I think it says, this fight ain't over yet. Even if we can't fix things, we can at least show them we ain't pussies. This is all familiar. This is something I've seen. The undead, the huge squid thing, all of this. Oh, oh. It was in a book! The book, the book, will show us the way. It foretold everything. I'm a fast reader. Blah, 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 blah. For two millennia, the Keepers kept the forces of darkness at bay. That power is always dormant, just waiting to be awoken. Just as it was on the battlefields of the Great War. Is this related to the guy in the jar? So obviously the Great War would be Origins, Jessica's talking about, and the guy in the jar is Maxis because his brain was put in a jar, and then at the Maxis drone, all in Origins, and of course he even references knowing a bit about Nikolai, so he knows about sort of our four characters that were on the map of Origins. Ah, Nikolai would have been proud of me. So Nero Blackstone probably is one of the smartest characters, if not the smartest character, the most intelligent of the four in the map of Shadows of Evil. And of course, like he explains, like he sums up what this map actually is. He sums up what the realm is and how everything in the realm is sort of interacted with and different things like that. He explains it as being an interdimensional convergence where sort of images from one dimension are leaked into another one and sort of two dimensions are sort of converged into one. That's what this map is and he understands this, whether it was written in the book or not, is sort of a mystery, it's like sort of, maybe we'll even get more references to this book in the future, but for now it's not really referenced by any of our characters, and like, it's an interdimensional convergence, and that is sort of how, like, Nero actually explains this. Now moving on to his relationship with sort of our other characters, he knew the boxer, he knew who the boxer was before, like, but, like them being transported into this realm, and he sort of, as regards Jessica, he starts hitting on Jessica a bit, like, saying, oh, well, we're the only two left, and the other two are fucking, like, 
they're, they're no use, so basically, like, it's me and you, baby, and he starts trying to flirt with her, and different things like that, but she's not having any of it, so he sort of gives up then, and he has faith in the detective, because he's absolutely clueless about sort of his corruption and, like, how he's getting paid off by a lot of gangs and stuff to keep secrets, and different things like that, so he doesn't have a clue that the cop is actually corrupted, he knew who the boxer was before Shadows of Evil, and of course he tries to hit on Jessica, now that's his relationship between and um, with sort of our other characters that are in this map. Now just before I wrap things up, an important quote from Nero is that he fears the worst is yet to come. Now we can take that going forward in zombies. The worst is yet to come, which means our maps are only going to get better, the story is only going to get deeper, and the game is only going to get more and more amazing. And just a final note as well, the person that you summon when doing the ritual in Nero's lair is actually Nero's lawyer. And yeah, you can sort of take that from when you pick up his pen, you sort of summon him into this realm. And that's how you sort of summon his lawyer. It's Nero's lawyer that you summon in Nero's lair when doing the ritual. And of course, that is pretty much it. If you did enjoy and if you did learn something, smash that like button and comment below who you would like to see me do next. Any questions regarding the storyline as well, definitely drop them down in the comment section below and I will reply to them and we'll have a bit of a discussion. And if I did leave any information out that you are aware of, make reference to it down in the comment section below as well, just for a reference for myself and for others. And once again, that is pretty much it. So I will talk to you all later. Once again, hope you all enjoyed. Peace out. Thanks for watching.